last race weekend of the BMW IBSF BM uh, Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cup. We're in Koenigsegg, Bavaria, and it is the eighth race weekend of the regular season. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me, John Morgan, as we get ready for the second and final heat of the two-man bobsleigh competition. Great first run, Martin, and uh, as we're getting accustomed to here is the the Germans seem to be dialed in here on their track. They won the gold medals in both the men's and women's skeleton competitions. As we look at the crowd that's 10 deep up and down the whole length of the track. And here's our first team highlights, Nico Volter. He won last week at San Moritz. He's got Kevin Kuska on the back. This is Kevin Kuska's last ever World Cup race. He started in 99. He's got four gold medals and a silver in his career on the back of Andre Longa sleds. You're looking at one of the greatest brakemen ever in the history of the sport. You'll see him. He's in third place with two other Germans he's going to chase down. Well, this guy Lochner and Christoph Weber, a new brakeman to him. Uh, Lochner didn't have a clean run. He's he born and raised here right down the street. It's needless to say, got big family and friends on hand. And this Bavarian, well, he's the fan favorite at the moment, but he's got a little issue chasing down. Francisco Friedrich, the four-time world champion who won on this track last year. Four consecutive world championships in two men he's won. He's got his partner in crime, Torsten Marcus, with him. They had the best start. They had the best finish. And guess what? They're the favorites, and they should win this second heat. 12 hundreds of a second cover the top two. Hansi Lochner chasing down Francesco Friedrich. Then Nico Walter, two hundreds ahead of Justin Cripps, who needs to finish in the top 19 to claim the Crystal Globe at the end of the season. We've got a tie for fifth. We've got a tie for eighth. We've got a tie for 11th. And we had a tie for 21st. Ivo De Bruyne bounced out Alexander Kazinov and Maxim Anjanov of Russia. And Cody Bascu also failing to make the cut for the final World Cup race of the season. While Francesco Frutic, junior world champion in two man, four senior world champions in two man, and a four man title on this track last year. One of the dominating driving forces is Oscar Kibermanis, one of the two Latvians in the top order. And Hansi Lochner. He's played with all sorts of different two-man sleds. Still not quite sure what he's going to take to the games when they begin in February. Warm-up section. Temperatures perfect in this unbelievably scenic setting. Justin Olsen of the USA leads off in the second heat. We go 20 to 1, last to fast out of our top 20 qualifiers. Both runs count. So for those that right at the very top, and especially for Friedrich, who goes last, consistency will be absolutely key. Lochner has big mistakes to tidy up. He could gain on Friedrich. And here on home ground, that's exactly what happened in the final run of the four-man. Friedrich had the lead into the final heat and then faltered. Lochner they caught him and they tied for the win. The USA's Justin Olsen and Evan Weinstock leading their two-man campaign and finishing off their World Cup season here in Koenigsegg, Bavaria, where last year's World Championships rounded out the entire year. Your teammate Cody Basco uh, got his feet tangled up in his ropes getting in the sled. That's why he didn't make the cut. So Olsen, 20th place, not much better. They had the fifth best start time. I mean, these are two as two good athletes in the field as anybody. Justin still learning how to drive these sleds. And this track, well, this is the equivalent. Oh, look at that bump in the first curve. That is a mistake in his entrance into that first curve. But Martin, this track's like Bristol. Uh, you know, we've seen tracks like last weekend in Altenburg, very much, or in St. Moritz is like a super speedway. This is a short quick track that's pretty challenging for the drivers. Well, look at the one straight on the track. It's got three corners in it. That gives you an idea of what a perverse track it is. Out of the Chrysler here, your line determines how much you hit in this little S's section, and you always hit some of it. And then down here in this Echovon, this flat curve, you exit uphill for the last 200 meters of the track, and when you're dealing with an uphill sport, the last, or a gravity sport, the last thing you want to do is make a mistake going uphill. 50.27, so that's uh, 12 hundreds faster than his first heat. 100 better at the start. I mean, you know, Olsen still in that, just started four years ago driving. And... Better run down the bend away, the long straight out of the S's down towards the Chrysler. 
And that tidied up some of those first run errors. Here this we go is, to the first corner. Is, you won't see too many more sleds doing that. He got in from the flat part of the take on and bumped away a lot of velocity. Then down here, you're going to see a lot of these replays, and there's a lot of binging and banging and into that C curve. See that hit for the wall? Come on, poor curve. Yeah. That's pretty much Justin Olsen's persona right there. Next up, Jan Verber of the Czech Republic, 19th after the first heat. He was the first man on the track this morning, started five flat and came down 19th spot, and he is 300s ahead of Olsen from the first heat. He's going to get crushed at the start here. Jan from Prague, and probably a 498 or so. He's more of a four-man specialist late in his career. 497, decent, a little bit better. Speed, look how smooth he got around the first curve compared to Justin Olsen, and Olsen admitted his, his mistake at the bottom. You know, this is that four S's up top. It's like a Disneyland ride. If you hit it great, you come out like that. You gotta hit here three times. There's two, there's three, that's the norm. And now this Kreisel, 112.3. Same speed as Olsen, exactly. That's 69.8 miles an hour. Let's see what he can do down here in the bottom. Pretty good. It's 10 hundreds back. You could still find 10 hundreds on this track, especially in this uphill section. You can find it out of the final corner. 119.3. more back. So Little Olsen's behind. Oh, better speed than Olsen, so that will stop him losing too much more. 11 hundreds at the line. So Justin Olsen. And on your left of your shot, Evan Weinstock stay in the leader's box. They climb one spot. They announced that as the Olympic pairing, Olsen and Weinstock. Well, fastest pushing driver and fastest pushing brakeman. That's what you need in the yeah, yeah, top Weber, combination. And the Czechs qualify two twos, two fours. The team is so excited. The first time they've done that ever. And it's great for the Czech program who Dvorak is coming up. He's got a lot of potential. And Jan Vibra is in his last games, I'm sure. Good lines, look at the head, barely above the cowling. A little bit of skid there. Yeah. Out of those S's, so technically challenging. Chris Spring with Cam Stones behind him. Brian Barnett took the first start and obviously has pulled up a little lame. So Cam Stones has spent the last 30 minutes warming up, getting ready to go. They had a 95 start with Brian Barnett at the brakes. I thought they were going to get into the 80s, the low 90s. So this should be, see what they do here. 96. Boy, Springer, third in World Cup points. This could drop him out of the one of the Golden Globes in rank. Yeah, he's been chased down by Oscar's Kiba Manis, who is 99 points behind him. So actually, I don't know uh, if he's going to be able to do that. I don't know. 10 places, maybe. Well, currently, spring 18th, and Kiba Manis tied for fifth. So at the moment, Kiba Manis might move up to the third spot in the overall season's rankings. Chris Springs had a great year. Third Olympics he'll be coming into, the first as an Australian in 2010. One in Whistler, silver in Winterberg. Same speed as the Czechs. 111.3. This is better, though. So this could be a chance to move him up and collect that third place. Big globes they give away. Yeah. I'm sure Chris, I don't think Chris has ever got one of those Golden Globes. No, never has. 2200s fast, <coughs> faster than his first heat. Well, so that's an improvement. There were a few slightly loose runs in the first heat. Well, this is down in the Doodles. The Canadians gave it the name, the Doodles, this little straightaway they call the Labyrinth, three-quarter change, airborne right runner. Pretty good correction under the Z-curve, and that's like 75. These pictures are like oh. 74, 75 miles an hour. Yeah, you see that shot. It shows you what a big hit it is. Going away, it doesn't look so bad, but they speed out of the sled. Look at the crowds. It's like this all the way up and down that track. Look at it. Yeah. Try getting the glue vine here in the break between runs. That takes forever. Next up, Dominic Dvorak of the Czech Republic. Jakub Nosek behind him. And as you said, Dvorak and Jan Verber both qualified in two-man and four-man. First time that's happened for Czech Republic in an Olympic Games. Small nation. It's yeah. great, great accomplishment. Small nation. Huge they were, they were They were going to be happy with one, two, and one, four. He would have drove the two. Reaper would have drove the four. Now they got an opportunity to take two two mans, two four mans to the Olympic Games. Yeah. This guy here has got improvement, and uh, quite a bit of improvement in the last couple of years. And he's a 10-8, 10-9 sprinter. 
Might be the fastest guy in the front seat of anybody in the competition. Three two-man World Cups this season, 13th, 12th, and 15th. Last year, he posted a top five in Innsbruck, his best personal best ever. Of course, Innsbruck's all about to start. 900s up on spring. Speed, 112 eights. Spring had better speed. speed. Spring had 13. Okay. 119.64. Now, let's see what he's got at the bottom. 119.3 is what Spring had. 119.2. So this is going to be another one too close to call. To 100. 110.8. I think Spring's going to get him. Spring had 111.3. So Spring's going to get him. Yep. Yeah, that final corner. Uphill section. You can go in in the lead and come out behind. Camp Stone's on the right. <laughs> Sevens rugby player for Canada. Well, that means that uh, Dvorak is second now with 16 to go. So unless we have a couple of slip-ups, that will be his least impressive two-man run of the season. OK, watch the back end of the sleds in the Canadian doodles. It's 75 miles an hour, a little slide, not too bad. But he lost speed on the bottom part of the track. Yep. Canada leads, Canada next up. Chris Spring is in the leader's box at the bottom of the track here in Koenigsee, Bavaria. And at the top is Nick Polignato, his teammate with Neville Wright behind him. Polo was uh, how much? 500s of a second, vast. Slice of time on this track that could go in any tiny error. Well, let's see what they produce at the start. 488 in the first heat was a top six push. Ponato top six. Ooh, Ooh. big tap there. That's a terrible mistake. Ponato top five of the world championships last year. Shocked everybody. His teammate Cripps got the silver medal. Bishop's University football player with this Edmonton guy who plays bass guitar, who's pretty much a beast on the back. Leads by 1400s. Needs good speed going into the Chrysler. Top speed. 113, 113. One. One. He's right in there. By a tenth. Good exit. 1400s lead is pretty Smooth tough. Ooh, that through was really the good there. as well. 120s. 120 flat. Good so call. Best speed we've seen, and he'll carry it at the line. It'll be 113, maybe 111 and a half. Okay. A much better run for Polonato. He was pretty loose in the first run. 49.97. That is a big, big advantage. That would have left him in eighth place after the first heat. Hundreds better in the second run. Well, it's about consistency, and you know, Polonato was one of one of the uh, top two, I think, in Lake Placid. The end of the first heat, fell the fifth. Got disqualified from a bronze medal in Innsbruck in a two-man competition. Yep. So he's been knocking on the door for those medals, and he's great improvement for him all season long. In and down, but this didn't help. He's 2,500s better. Look at the drift. That grabs the handles, and yeah, for some reason it snags left. There. Maybe that was his foot section. on the ropes. That tap didn't help either, so 2,500's better with those couple taps. But a That's big improvement on the bend away. There's Neville Wright, the beast on the back. Five down, 15 to go. Canada 1-2 here in Bavaria. Tulips from Amsterdam, of course. That's how you introduce the Dutch. This is Ivo de Bruyne, Janko Francic behind them. So Tom Delahunty and the big figure of Raul van der Zijder at the top of the track. 499, probably a five flat, 501. Really good start in the first run for these two. 97, excellent. So this might be his personal best if he gets to the bottom in the lead in a couple years. And this Dutch driver here in the previous Olympic quadrennial, about 2012, there was a lot of hope and promise for him from the Dutch camp, but just never got any support from the Dutch Olympic Committee. And He's been struggling ever since. 17th in Lake Placid at the beginning of last season. That's he's the best, best result speed. in two years, and that is the best speed we've seen. He's lost time back. Look at that. He went from the best speed at the time, but that's the that's the start. 700s back. 120.8. Comfortably the top speed. He could take right the lead. Oh, it's going to be too close to call. Three. He is going to take the lead. It was only 500s. He does. That's cruel. Look at Tom. Oh, it's the hundreds. Tom. It's the hundreds. Still a great finish, finish for him. No, absolutely. Great, great, great and finish. And he and Polignato, a hundredth apart. Now, there will be sleds, I think, that drop behind them. Both have had an improved second run. Yeah. 
49.99 would have put you in the top seven in the first run, Evo. That's a great run. 1900 is better. Look at the rudder tips. He flops off the fourth S. And look, you can see a little bit of the brakeman back yeah. there, which I'm saying is some bad air there, though. You can, shouldn't see those brakeman shoulders. Tidied Keep your up eyes the on those away, pictures. Though. Look at that. That's a much yeah. better straightaway. He's a little skid a little going skinny, But he still had the top speed into the Chrysler. Well, the Dutch are rebuilding from the ground up. Evo will be the figurehead of their program. The French have done the same over the last three or four years. Roman Heinrich, a former brakeman, started driving a couple of seasons ago, took himself off, bought a sled, and got used to driving. And he goes to the games as their two-man representative. Jeremy Bouterin, the brakeman behind him. One of the smallest guys in the back of a sled in the competition. And one of the biggest drivers as well. And yeah, look at the great. heel action of the yeah. driver. You know, his toes barely leave the ice. Getting get down. Don't well, he's getting in very late. That's okay. It's a long run eight. down to the first corner. And what about the momentum? 56-2. That's not bad. Okay, the four S's. They say when you hit this perfectly, it's like a Disneyland ride. It was when I competed on the track. Look at that. Look at that good exit. exit. 1,200 is back, but what speed will he carry? Ooh, that's not good there. Whoops. 112 high. 112 high. There it is. 112.9. Okay, so he will be behind Polignato oh, and, and De Bruyne. 1,300 is back. He's going to really have to find the Bavarian line down here in the bottom. He'll be challenging Chris Spring, 120.0. That's quicker than Spring went, so this is for third place, 112. That's not bad either. Not great, but it's not bad. Third at the line. So the Dutch move up one more, yeah. although they get their spot back. Yeah, they hold Laura on. Laurent Mejean on the left, the longtime French coach and athlete in his day, bronze medal at the 98 Olympic Games, the French. and the one one tenth quicker than Heinrich in the first heat, by the way, cover the next five sleds. So there is the possibility of lots more changes. This didn't help. He's, you know, he's inexperienced. You just got to take your medicine here. Hit yeah. right, hit left, hit right, go into the big curve, and then down here, it's, you know, it's a little ricochet rabbit down there in that labyrinth. And then this is the uphill section where you have to be so clean. And looks like he had a little bit of skid there on the yeah. exit of the Echo Von. Two years of driving. Roman Heinrich currently in third. One Russian sled made the field in That's the first hay. To have two Russian sleds yeah. not make the field. And Kasanov, who has medaled in the World Cup circuit this year in two men, didn't make the field. Yeah. No, his best finish was fourth. Yeah, he's had a good season in four man, but none of the Russians have had a good season in two man. Stolnev is going to have the, the worst start time of the fives. You'll see this five come up. Eighth best start, okay? So he's 700 down. He's got two fifth place finishes in the last two events in San Moritz and Altenburg with similar starts. This is a, the short track. It's like I said, this is like the Bristol Motor Speedway. It's one of the shortest tracks that we compete on. Oh, and it's all about driving. Oh, oh, oh. Now, if he'd done that in the first heat, yeah. Cody Baskew and, and he and the, the, the other two Russians would all have been out. Yeah. Oh, that was a horrendous straightaway. He somehow still got 112.7 kilometers an hour on he's, board. You might find some, you know, he's got a pretty good line in the bottom part of this track. Fourth last year in one of the events, but he's buried. 120.4, second fastest speed. 112.4, second fastest speed. Not enough, he ran out of track. So yeah. Sixth best time, he lost three places in 10 hundredths. Yeah. So Paulinato and... And De Bruyne and Roman Heinrich they all move, move up. up. Yeah. They'll take the, that. The Russian will end up no better, perhaps, than 15th. Start times. The Russian start times are deplorable. Three Russian sleds, eight weekends, 24 races. Their best results, in fact, their only top 10 results, are a fourth, two fifths, and a sixth. Well, this isn't. This guy's one of the better drivers in the field. That tells you what this track could do to you. It's so hard to get down here clean in two consecutive runs. But how can he hit so much on the bend away and still have the best to beat in the Chrysler? Well, the exit. Yeah. Benny Meyer tied for 11th place with Rika Peter. So Austria versus Switzerland. Who gets to break the tie? 86, 87. 89, just like they had the first run. Good starting team. They got outstarted by Austria, too, in the first run. Yeah. That young team, they average it, but they're about 22 years old in average age. Most of the field got outstarted by Austria, too. Marcus Dreichel, fourth quickest getaway. Benny Whoops. Meyer. 
Just thought good in this track. Number of times, two, three, four hits. That's not what you want, though. Speed, 113, 113, four. Same as the first run. He pulled it down off the S's too fast, but he has got great speed. Good piece of equipment. This sled right here won the World Championships on this track last year. The Germans sold it to the Austrians. I think the Germans wish they had it back. Top speed, 121.2. That is 75.3. Well, that's big there, too. 112.5 is the fastest. 49.81. Wow, that's 2100 better. The, his father, Manfred Mayer, celebrates on the left. So he takes the lead away from Canada's Nick Polignato. Apollo will be no worse than 13th, having been in 16th in the first heat. Meyer could move up here. Yeah. Good run, good start. And a 49.81, by the way, would have been good enough for third in the first heat. Exit of the S's, and that wasn't perfect. A little too quick, but he did not steer away from trouble. Now he's in a skid, though. Yeah. And then down here in the labyrinth labyrinth every course got to have a three corner combination this is the shortest quickest one that exists and boy is it a challenge for anything that comes down a bobsled loose skeleton passenger bobs feel it going through there yep. look at the eyes yeah rico peter of switzerland with seaman friedley tied for 11th 400 out of the top 10 and the top 10 position 10th spot his teammate clements brasher so 400s behind Brasher after the first heat. That will be the first target for Rico Peter is to overhaul his teammate. In terms of the overall point standings, Rico Peter a long way ahead. He's actually Watch fifth hand. in the World Cup. Four points behind Oscar's Cuba Manis. Look at his hand. See, he can't grip because he's got that broken thumb from the accident in Altenburg two weeks ago. And he's, you know, he's, he's still about 80%. Give him credit. I mean, he can... Big Good. battle for third place in the World Cup rankings between Chris Spring, Oscar's keeper Manis, Rika Peter, and Nico Valter. And at the moment, Valter is in the driving seat. Well, he needs perfect lines down here to overtake Meyer. Meyer was. Oh, that's not perfect. Oh! And the what is it about the S's this morning? Everybody's back What's about out. the S's every year? Well, I yeah, mean, it's no, a there challenge. 112.6 Meyer, 113.4. He's yeah. a kilometer now, now the down. question is how many sleds is he going to fall? He could fall three or four places here. Right, well, this is going to count him out of the Crystal Globe. 119.6, Meyer was 121.2. 111.3. So how many spots? Five. Wow, drops Seven. four spots. Look at that. Yikes. Finds behind. Look at the Dutch. Ivo De Bruyne is up there now. Polonato, Meyer, top three. Heinrich. Rico Peter only as only quick as Stolnev. Only a hundred ahead of Stolnev. Yeah. So he had a slower time. He's the first athlete to come down with a, or no, besides Stolnev, he was, with a slower time. Yeah, he was only a hundred ahead of Stolnev in the first heat, and that's where What's he stays. the exit here? I mean, this is the exit of the S's. You want to see how much of a challenge it is? It's one of the best drivers in the world. Been down this track probably over a hundred times. Look what the S does to him there. Ten down, ten to go. Benny Meyer of Austria leads from Nick Polignato. Rico Peter couldn't find a good second run on this Koenigs A track. Let's see if his teammate can. Switzerland's Clemens Brascher, the final ten sleds of the regular two-man season. Michael Quonen, the brakeman, Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action in Koenigs A Bavaria. The eighth and last BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup race. The surprise winner of the fourth event of the year in Winterberg. It was his debut in a two-man sled as a driver, and he won it. Well, of course, he had been there in the Europa Cup a couple weeks before, but still shocked everybody. And 490 start in the first run, 491 here. And let's see what he could do out of these four S's. Huh? Only got 100 to lead. That's but not good. Wall. That's do a skid oh, there, too. A big skid into the Yenikos. 112, yeah, 112, 6. That's not the 113 that Meyer had. Same as his teammate, Rico Peter. He was only 400s in front of Peter. Be pretty tough to overcome this. He's going to need 121 speed is what Meyer had. That's kilometers. That's not it. He's a kilometer down. That's 73.9 miles an hour. 111.8 is not good speed. He's going to drop three spots, maybe four. Two, okay, only second at the line. Oh, 1600s. Yeah, so... 
Benny Meyer, like I thought, didn't have a very good first run, and the Austrians will have two sleds, good chance of being in the top 10, which is pretty cool. You can see the disappointment. Mm. Well, this is that challenge out of that SS in this straightaway. It's not a straightaway, it's a bend around, and you really have to hit three times. Right side of our screen, left side of our screen, right side of our screen. You will see the fast sleds come down and do that. Go straight into the Kreisel. Benny Meyer of Austria, the leader from Clemens Brasher. We've had 11 sleds down, nine to go. Tie for eighth place in Königsee, Bavaria, the final two-man race of the season. Brad Hall of Great Britain, starting with Sam Blanchet, the rugby player for the first time. Good technique, look at the brakeman's head locked in between his shoulders, watch him get in, watch his, ooh, little slip get in, but it wasn't cohesive. Good 496, not bad, but now he's in a dead heat with Benny Meyer, and he's probably gonna be red numbers next clock. Yep, that you lose a lot of velocity with the deficient start. You can make it up here with a great exit, though. There's one hit, two Oop. hits, three hits. Saw him took a steer off the Four first hits. hit. Five hits. Oh, skid into the inner curve. 112.5, that's way down on speed, and uh, he's in jeopardy of falling back a couple spots. Way back, two tenths, and that's oh, not good. Really violent down through the labyrinth. But this, this British athlete here has been through a lot. If he stays around for the next four years, you're gonna see something out of him. He won his first World Cup medal this year in four man in North America. 10th best time, falls five places behind De Bruyne, behind Heinrich of yeah. France. The bend away did for him, yeah. and then out of the cries on the line hits. wasn't good and just hit everything He'll, in the he's labyrinth. He's such a competitive athlete. He's yeah. gonna, you know, get his help as Sam out. And you know, how many, how many sleds we've seen come down here clean yeah. yet? None, two. And there's three. And his kid. And, and then and there's down here the doodles. Well. Watch Oof. how airborne this sled gets. Mm, no, but. Uh, that was pretty, pretty hard, hard hit left to yeah. right transition. It wasn't Look at straight. It. Runners up in the air there. Yeah. yeah. And all that energy lifting the sled off the ice means it's taking it out of forward Heike motion. Heike Grosswang and Ivo Ferriani, the president of the International Bobsled Skeleton Federation at the bottom. Now, one of the big stories from it the first heat is Austria's Marcus Treichel and Kinney on Vouch. Wow. Fourth fastest start, wow. came down eighth. Parrots, we just talked to the parrots. There are pins and needles here. Yeah. This is a 20-year-old Brakeman Walsh, who's the youngest athlete in the field, and they had the fourth best start. 49, that wasn't bad, 300 slower, but the, this guy's in uncharted territory. I mean, he comes down here for a top 10. Might as well be a gold medal win, especially if he bests his Austrian teammate at the bottom, who has got all the media. Last year was his two-man World Cup debut. Didn't make the cut once. Best result for Marcus Treichel so far this season. A pair of 17th in Innsbruck no speed, and Altenburg. Now you just hope he doesn't drop more than one or two spots. 112.6, same as Rico Peter and Clemens Brasher. Brand new Walner sled he's been driving. 119.7, that's close. He won't have the lead at the bottom, Ooh, but he no. might only start two, two spots. This is still going to be for a top 10 finish for Marcus Trichel. Fifth, he Fifth. drops out of, still his best personal With best seven ever. seven to go, but a top 12. Still. Yeah. He goes behind Edith with De Bruyne. De, De, Evo De Bruyne's at 11. Yeah. Maybe the Dutch Olympic Committee will take a look at that. Still a great result for him. This Absolutely great start. So. That, you know, I'm very impressed with their start times. Yep. You come out here in the in the in the World Cup and watch the head here. Look, see the head wobbing back and forth. That's I don't like that. Watch this head. Look at look at the way the head comes out. See, he yep. got out of there too much in the early on that pressure point. But when you see that much movement in the sled, Martin, there's got to be movement left to right. Still yep. best personal best ever for him. Absolutely. Still got a big smile on his face. Seven sleds to go, Ugis Alams of Latvia. First of three Latvian sleds. Yeah, 3,800 off the lead, a tenth of a second in hand after the first heat over Marcus Treichel, who's just gone down, and over current leader Benny Meyer. He has 1,600 of a second, 1,700s. There's Benny on the right, Marcus Sammer on the left. So it's so close, Meyer could get him too, Zalmans. 
as you know, hasn't had a top 10 finish all season. Yeah, one tiny error on the bend away, and he, he will drop down the order as well. 493 is another good start. Six flat is pretty good. Velocity, that's how the brake pit gets in the sled and gets around, and the driver gets around the first curve. Four S's and now what? Uh, ooh, clean. He should hit three times. One, two, three. That's the norm. Yeah. That's, that's the first that's guy. That's the ideal line. 1128. So he's got good speed going into but the he doesn't have the red knight. He's got red numbers here. Yeah. Doesn't Four have hundreds. the speed of Benny Meyer. Oh, oh my big hit. goodness. A lot of energy left to right there. Blam. 1189. 189. Now he's going to fall. 111, two. So I mean, for spots, he's going to fall at least one. And he does. he does slip behind Benny Meyer and Marcus Hammer. Meyer continues his climb up the order. The top six beckons. He only needs to pick one more off, and it's a top six result for the Austrian. So the question is, does, is everybody doing bad in the second run, or did Meyer do so well in the second run and faltered in the first run? Yeah, he Meyer faltered in the first, first run. run. Benny Meyer's best result of the season so far, seventh, and he will at least tie that. Still good result for Zalman's top 10. That's his best finish of the year. We love talking about personal best. Mm, this might not be the personal best for the sled with 74 miles an hour with the back runners airborne. And look at the brakeman. Yeah. Look how close people get to the track. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what the viewing here is looking, Sanders Bruce. <laughs> Sanders, you're going to have three ba, sleds ba, in the ba, top ba, 10. Ba, ba. Hey. Look at Zalims, all right, not crestfallen with that. His two teammates come up next. Can Benny Meyer pick off one or both Latvians? Could be both. They were tied in the first heat. A tie for fifth place. First to go, Oscars Kibamanis and Mattis Miknis. 85 in the first run. Could be 83, 84. These unbelievable athletes. The dish to our 84. So this young Latvian, four years ago, was just started driving. They got him off the streets of Riga. Decathlete, put him in the front seat. We didn't know about him the first couple of years, but last year at this time, the light bulb went off, and he went on to finish two medals at the pre-Olympic test in Pyeongchang, Korea, the only athlete to do that. So you got to put him down as one of the favorites coming into Korea, and the Latvians, Martin, have been sort of sleeping this whole World Cup here, hoping to peak in February. Gaps coming down, was 2,900, now 21. He needs 119s here, 118. Benny Meyer was one Oh, he's got plenty of time, though. Plenty of time. Mm, it's going to be, be close, leader. but he will have he the lead over Meyer. Ducks his head. 1,600. 49, 88. 700, so. so slower than Benny Meyer, so he survives on his first heat. First, only 100 better. That tells us now the track has been chewed up a little bit. We won't see that the early sleds all go 20, 2,500. better. They have a cleaner track to work with. Well, this ben, is what evens ben up Meyer the draw. Fastest so far in this second heat. Oscar's Kieberman is second quickest. What's the break? What's the what's the technique? In, watch the arms. In, down. Watch him bury himself back there for aerodynamics. And he's not even the top. He's not even the normal break that Kieberman uses. Here's the lines in the turbo drone. Consistent. You see the heads get shook around in there. That's because there's about four G's of force. Oscars Kibermanis leads five to go to round out the two man World Cup season. The battle is on for the Crystal Globe. Justin Cripps looks set to win it from Francesco Frigic, but for third, it's Chris Spring versus Oscars Kibermanis, Rico Peter, and Nico Volta. Oscars Melbardis won bronze medal this season has not yet claimed victory in the two-man, and he's out of the running for the top three spot. 11th best start in the first run. And these two monsters, they're the two biggest athletes in the field. Watch the way these two 245-pound guys get in, get themselves into that little bathtub, we call it. And he's got a 493. He's got the 11th best start in the first run. Usually he has a top three start. Both of them dealing with back surgeries in the last couple of years. I ask him, are you 100%? No, we're about 85%. How about at the Olympics? We'll be 100, they said. So, again, the Latvian strategy, Ooh. I think, is just to wait until the Olympic Games to peak. Yeah. It's no point wearing yourself out. 113.6, Benny Meyer, 113.4. So that is the top speed we've seen into the Chrysler. Boy, but he can get this back with this. Going to need 120. 120. There it is, 122. 122 is Boy, sensational, that's sensational now. This could be a shot for the medals. Wow. 112.9 at the bottom. He's got talent, and, you know, with the start time, 49.81.
He goes 800s better. He's got the 13th best start. And that would have left him third in the first heat. Watch out if he gets his mojo at the start in Korea. He's silver medalist in the four-man in Sochi. And of course, that could be a goal, too, but watch out. He's coming off that back surgery. He hasn't been the same in two years. Look at the size of the guy in the back. Yeah. 6'4", 245 pounds. And look at the hits. Four hits here. Wasn't perfect, but average speed at the start and then the best speeds on the bottom. Look at this down in the finish, right here at the finish curve. And this is where you can throw away a lot of time in this uphill section. Into the final four sleds of the two-man World Cup season. The BMW IBSF Crystal Globes will be awarded this afternoon. And this is the man most likely to clinch it. He needs just a 19th place finish, Justin Cripps. Best start in the first run. They had an 83 him. And look at the technique by Al Alex Kopak. Wow, 480. 59 kilometers an hour. That's sensational velocity. Kopak is just developed, I think, into the, one of the best, if not the best, brakeman in the world. Not that Cripps is any slouch in the front seat either. Cripps, silver medal on this track in the World Championships last year. In the World Cup before that, he won the event. So he's his first ever World Cup victory on this track. He likes the place and is showing it now. Top speed is right there with Oscars Malbardis. Malbardis 122-0 oh, at the next clock. But this is him shooting for the medals. He was only 200 out. 120. 20.4 might not be enough for Cripps. He's only 200 out of medals in the first heat. He'll take the lead. But is 49, it 56. Wow. That's one of the most best improvements That's from the, the first to second heat. Fastest run of the competition so far. That's quicker than Francesco Friedrich's first run. I, I think it's a medal. That's good. He's going to overtake Nico Walter, who's coming up next for Germany. Doesn't have a start like that. And our friend Cripps didn't have a very good first run. Nothing wrong with the track. It's holding up fantastically. Well, down here, when you have this much velocity that they got off the blocks with, then great speeds down here. A little bit of air, 14, but everybody's got that down there. And the that part of the track two hours after the first heat and we're still going quicker but three, that's the world cup champion down there three to go he is now and he is absolutely. now the world cup champion now, no matter what who is going to be third is it going to be nico valta chris spring rico peter or oscars keeper manis nico valta first will be thinking about trying to claim a medal here 28 26 hundreds off the lead in the first run Kevin Kuska in the back, making his World Cup final race. The 37-year-old, four gold medals, one silver in the Olympics on the back of Andre Langer's sled. The most decorated German bobsled brakeman maybe ever. And this is his final race. Well, he's racing tomorrow in the four-man, but last two man's counting. He's won here with Andre Langer. He's won Ooh. medals with Langer and with Florschutz. Can he do it with a third different speed driver? He's going to have insane speed, have a chance. 113.8's not enough. At the moment, he's behind Mel Bardis. Nico Valter is not just not going to get a medal. But he's not. He's going to run out of track. He's going to get this yeah. down to the teens, maybe. But he, just, he got blown away at the start by Cripps. Mel Bardis had 122. Valter is not going to get a medal here second best time so there's Cripps. Cripps likes this track yes now, he's he great but speaks great german yeah trains up in uh, the north in germany here kopak has developed into some break but the canadians are peaking Cripps has finished no worse than fourth at every race this season fourth second or first that's why he won the world cup title yeah nico valta in second place with two to go maybe out of the medals gave up too much time at the start 1300s back of Crips. These are decent lines. Yep. But, yeah. Ooh, right little there. Oh, little skid. Look at the runner yep. tips there. So he wasn't comfortable with that last uh, bump. Overcorrected a little. So he drops out of the lead with two to go. Final two sleds of the two man World Cup season. Local boy Hansi Lochner versus four time two man world champion Francesco Friedrich. 12 hundredths of a second in it. Lochner had a bit of an untidy first heat. Needs a really good run now to take gold. Christoph 
Christopher Weber, the new brakeman on the back, he emerged as the top German brakeman in their push-offs in Oberhof, and Joshua Bloom is the normal brakeman for Lochner, but Germans have made another switch. 56-8, great momentum, quicker than their first start. And Lochner is from his hometown. He's only lives one mile down the street. Five hits down the bend away. That might give Francesco oh, Frisia what he needs. Good. 1.39 is the fastest we've seen Hansi Lochner to win at home in He's the up. He'll take the lead from Chris Spring. Is it enough for gold? 1.21, 120.8. 120 Melbardis had 1.22. Down to 400, 112.6, that's not the not same enough. speed. I don't know. Is it? No, Four hundredths of a second. Still great result for the Canadians. Cripps had a bad first run. But yeah. Rennie Spies and Leo Leopold, they celebrate like the Bavarian crowd. The kid was born right down the street a mile away. Yep, family still lives in Berchtesgaden. And Hansi Lochner, Christopher Weber take the lead with one to go. Echoes of the last race we watched on this track, John. The four-man world championships. He took the lead. Francesco Friedrich with one run to go to win it. Made a mistake. But look at this bend away. Pretty clips, good there. Clips there clips early. Right, and that's a disaster. He somehow got away with that. And then down here in the tricky part of the track, let's look at the back end of the sled. Mm, not the bad. Nicest lines he, we've seen. Look at him. He, he is a well, little bit of a clown, too. He knows he's in there with spring. Now, could he take the silver medal, bronze medal? Let's take a look for our race winner, Francesco Friedrich, the four-man world champion, including in February last year on this track. 483, like he had in the first run. He didn't turn it on like Cripps did. 57-3 is great momentum. Thorsten Margus on the back, the highest ranked, the athlete in the field, 7,700 plus points. And they're four-time world champions. Skids off oh. S4, but he's got a quarter of a second lead, in the back, and that's lead. good enough. He's driven five different sleds since the new year. He hasn't been comfortable in anything. This is the guy that's been a little perplexed on the World Cup here this year. Best speed we've seen so far, 114.2. Top speed up until now, 122. 121.7. He's going away to win this one. He won last week at Samaritz. And this will be win number two no, of the last season. No, 49 4 0, the fastest run of the competition. Wow, I take it back. He was second last week at St. Moritz, but Martin, I was trying to say, it looks like he's starting to get his mojo as we go into the Korean Olympics. So, since we came to Europe, Francesco Friedrich, silver, gold, silver, silver, gold. That sounds like the guy that we, this Saxony driver. Now, we have to say that he won the pre Olympic competition in Pyeongchang. Only two people have ever done that in the 18 times in two and four, and only two people have ever won the pre-Olympic test and the Olympic gold medal. Pierre Luters is one of them. He corrected us on that statement from last week. But maybe a jinx for him going into Korea. You know and plus the pressure on the Germans. They did not medal in Sochi. For the first time the Germans had not medaled since the 56 Olympics. Well, he made no mistakes here. His last race on this track was the four-man world championships. He won that. The previous race on this track, the two-man world championships, he won that as well. He has won twice in the last, now three times in the last five outings here. Well, he's on pace. I think he's back. He was pretty confused in North America, trying different pieces of equipment. So he takes victory from Hansi Lochner and Justin Cripps. Nico Valta slips out to fourth place ahead of Mel Bardis and Kiba Manis. And that may not be enough to head off Kiba Manis in the battle for third place in the Crystal Globe. Cripps will win it. Francesco Friedrich will take second place in the overall season rankings. And I think Kiba Manis probably shades Chris Spring for third. Well, you can Boy, hear he, in the background he crushed him. the track announcer going mental down there. But he just crushed everybody in the second yep. run. 49-4-0. Yeah. Next quickest was Cripps at 49-5-6. So Francesco Frugic winning comfortably. Hansi Lochner, Justin Cripps, just four hundredths of a second apart for the silver and the bronze. And Nico Valter couldn't match his first run pace. 
and couldn't match Justin Cripps either. That's why Cripps is so strong. As he said, worst results of the season, fourth places. Nobody has had consistency like that. He's had three silver medals, a gold, and now a bronze. That's why Justin Cripps is the two-man medal winner of choice. Ivo Ferriani in the background, and the head of the Solitude Bob Club. Solitude, former Grand Prix circuit in Bavaria, out by the Lake of Constance. One of the most dangerous of the road courses that continued into the 1960s. Well, Francisco, I think, is probably going to sleep better at night. He's probably got his sled of choice, finally, as he goes into Korea. And, but there were still questions, even last week, two weeks ago, Martin, in Altenburg, he tried three different sleds in the week of training. And still is. I was talking to Rennie yes, Spies this morning. <coughs> Here's our guy. I mean, I don't think he's competing tomorrow in the final. Uh, he said he was. was he, yeah? he said he was. Because so. last week he told us that was his last race. Yeah, but they got DQ'd. And that's no way to end a career. Right, OK, no, forget that. I'm coming back. So one more. So Solitude Bob Club from Bavaria. That's the club that Hansi Lochner slides for. The local hero. You see lots of blue and white checkers in the crowd. There's the father. There's his dad, yeah. Yeah. Electrician. Yeah. That's what he told his son two years ago. You better start doing well. You're going to go to work. <laughs> Best is Garden Bavaria and the Koenigs A track. The final World Cup race of the season. Justin Cripps takes the Crystal Globe. Francesco Frugic in second. And Chris Spring does just enough to hang on in third place ahead of Oscar's Cuba Manis and Nico Valta creeping in front of Rico Peter. That was always going to be a tough battle. 10.58 points for Nico Valta, 10.64 uh, uh, 10, uh, for Rico Peter. Rico Peter slipping a little down the order in the race here and out of fourth place. So victory for the second time only in the two-man World Cup season for Francesco Frutic and Torsten Margis following on from their win in Innsbruck. But John, since they left North America and sorted out the Valna two-man sleds, he's gone from being in the teens to being silver or gold. Well, that's what we saw him last year. Five or six straight races and two and four. He had won air, like four out of six yeah, in silver. Won the first five he races was so of the year, dominant. Yeah. I mean, the guy's on the verge of being one of the greatest ever in our sport. And he's only 25 or 26. Yeah. There he is in the blue beanie. Torsten Margus alongside him. They get their flowers from Andreas Troutvetter. And a big applause. So three races in, three German winners. Johannes Lochner and Christopher Weber, the silver medalist, the local team from Bavaria. And in third place, Justin Cripps with the helmet and Alex Kopax. Another big result for Justin Cripps. And he is our World Cup champion for 2017-18. And if those three drivers aren't in contention for the Olympic medals, something very weird is happening in Pyeongchang. That's it for the two-man season. We've got women's bobsleigh and four-man still to come here in Koenigsegg. Join John Morgan, me, Martin Hayden, the IBSF TV crew for all the action.